Welcome to Morrison Madness. This is how not to spend a, a date night. <laughs> Take 27. Yes. So, I'm Don, by the way. I'm Lachelle. Um, and in our previous podcast, we talk a lot. Um, in fact, I think we did one whole podcast about karaoke. But we talk a lot about our DJ company. Yeah, yeah. And we mentioned that we do name that tune. We do weddings and corporate events. And I feel like we've only just touched a little bit on my other businesses. Yes. And well, so, we did. We talked about it a little bit in your hobby. Right. In the jobbies. Right. Episodes. But we don't ever really go into detail. Right. Of what it's like. I think right. we did post a video somewhere. On social media, we have a sped up <clears throat> video of sorting cards. Right. So we wanted to show you kind of what it looks like when we're sorting cards. In and real time? Yes. So <laughs> imagine that there are six of these boxes. And, and we should preface this. that this, this is what we do in our free time when we watch a movie is we sit down and yes. we sort cards. When we... This or, is a date night for Or if we Dom have a rainy I. day and we can't mow and Lachelle doesn't have PhD stuff to do. Right. Or she, or she needs a break I from it. a break from it, usually. Right. Yeah. When we sit down to watch a movie, we don't actually not do something. Right. We do this. Right. This this is our date night. And when a new set comes out, <laughs> there would be six of these boxes. At least. Sometimes more. Right. Depends on how crazy Don decides to get. And so... So there's there's a box, and we, for those that are listening to the podcast, we have to kind of describe it. So this is a booster box. Is that what this is called? This if is you're, a, right, draft boosters. And if it, you're into Magic the Gathering. It's wrapped in cellophane, so I just took the cellophane off of it. Yeah, if you're into Magic the Gathering, it's a booster box, but it's, I don't know, what would you say? How many inches wide? Six by nine. Two and a half tall. Right. Nine wide, and it has packs in it. Like if you think about when you could get... Um, Trading cards with bubble gum, right? In baseball it. cards, baseball football cards, cards, that kind of thing. It's those kind of packs, and then there's how many packs in here? Uh, in a draft booster, there's 36. So there's 36 packs in a box, and we would open at least six boxes, if not more. Right. Kind of thing. So. And so, we used to just kind of do it willy nilly, but we have learned. We have we have figured out a system that makes it go faster. And part of it is because. Um, of my RA, the the constant motion of of sorting cards starts to hurt my shoulder. Right, because you lot. you have to sort the cards again. If you're not familiar with Magic: The Gathering, we sort by color first, and there's five colors. Six. Six colors. Because there's colorless. Well, and then there's multicolor, and there's artifacts. So there's right. more than that, but there's five actual yeah. colors. Yep. And then col multicolor artifacts. And colorless and lands. And so you end up with like eight to nine piles. And so you have to sort into those piles. And then once you have them sorted by colors, then we have to alphabetize within the color. So then you have up to 26. I don't know how many letters are in the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time since. Am I smarter than a fifth grader? No. So <laughs> in any case, then you have that many piles that you're having to sort in. And then you even alphabetize within the alphabet kind of idea. So, yes, there's there's quite a few. So Don starts off opening packs. Right, and usually what I do is I get everything set up before Thanks, Lachelle yes. comes out because Lachelle will get ahead of me. <laughs> and she doesn't like to have more than three packs in a stack. Yeah, so he opens up three packs and puts it into a stack. And the reason that I like three, three, stack, or three packs in a stack is then that stack is just tall enough for my hand for me to hold in one hand and I can push the top cord forward a little bit with my thumb to where I can see it and I can sort. Um, and then again, if you play Magic the Gathering, you know the colors are white, blue, black, red, and green. And I put them in that order. So this is a red card as we're going. I'm not sure which camera is the best one, so I'll just hold still. A red card. So I would put that here because I will have white, blue, black, red, and green across the top. And I just kind of start sorting that way. So there I have white, blue, black, red, and green already. And then this is an artifact land. So lands are going to go here. Multicolor goes over in this corner. And I am just going to go forward. And you have, to be, you have to be careful how you open them. I know some people yes. that actually open them by cutting the tops off with scissors. Um, that, would, that would make me nervous. Is the whole reason you we're can... doing this because you really wanted to open cards? No. Oh. Because <laughs> um, I figured it was. <laughs> no. 
No, in fact, it was hard for me to decide which set to do because I really didn't want to open any of the sets that I have downstairs. And then there's also foils, which are shiny cards um, compared to the other cards. They, they have like a foil cover, so it's shiny. And so those have to be sorted separately and they get sleeved, so we put those off to the side. And then there's tokens, which sometimes get sorted within the color. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're double-sided. So I just set those off to the side because it, it's different for every set. But there, there is a method to the madness in the long run. And so where this is different than baseball cards, football cards, hockey cards, that kind of thing, is that this is an actual game that you can play. Right. And then... And then you sell these cards. Right. So you can use them to build a deck to play against one other person or against multiple other people and there are different formats that you can play it in um and then yes you can we had a store an actual physical location store um that we closed because of the virus and then um and now it's only online right we sold online at the same time but we we had an actual physical location right we have not reopened that physical location what is the name of your store in case people are interested and they want to check it out it is called dragon's magic games okay and i'll try and make sure to put a link in the description i have a hard time talking while i do this because i kind of get focused and i (laughs) i'm sorting and there's i mean again we only our podcasts are you know between 15 and 30 minutes I don't feel like we're going to get through this whole set in that amount of time, this whole box in that amount of time. Because usually... No, we might not. I mean, when we do a case of them, it takes us a couple of days to get them all sorted by color and then alphabet. Is that part of the list? Or is that just different? No, that's a retro frame. It's an artifact. So it's still... Okay. I didn't see the symbol for the list, so that... There's, there's little nuances, and again, if you play the game, you might know some of this information. If you don't play the game, there's nuances that... It, you don't necessarily need to know that stuff to play the game unless you're having to build your own deck. Um, you can play the game without really knowing the nuances of, like, if it's a part of a list or what the different sets are called or anything along those lines. Um, so there are there are different ways to sort. Um, I n- had a friend that used to have a store, and he when he sorted magic cards, the first thing that he did, because the, the cards are put in here in a specific order... This black symbol tells you what the set is, and the first ten cards usually are all have that black symbol, and those are called common cards, and the next color symbol is a silver colored symbol, and those are called uncommon cards, and there's usually three or four of those, and this one has four in it. And then the next one is either a gold or a red symbol. A gold is a rare, and a red symbol is a mythic, and those tend to be the more sought after cards and so then usually are the more expensive cards and he would sort them this way before he sorted them any other way because he wanted to know what he had for rares and mythics so that he could get them put out first and then worry about sorting the other stuff and inventorying the other stuff later and I know some people who don't bother dealing with commons at all they only sell rares, mythics, and uncommons. Right. Um, It takes a lot more time and space to do all of the cards. It does take a lot of space. Um, We have an entire 12 by 12 room in the basement that is completely full of these cards on shelves. Um, And then I have had to build shelves out into the family room down there because there's no more room in the in the bedroom. The hobby is taking over the house. Yes. <laughs> um, I think the last time I checked the online inventory, I have about a million cards in inventory, and then I have probably a half a million cards that are not inventory. Right. And that doesn't that's that doesn't count my sealed stuff that hasn't open, been opened. Yeah, I'm talking open about, cards that... I'm talking about um, lots of cards that I have bought from individuals that were looking to get out of the hobby for whatever reason. Right. What else should we talk about with this game? 
Um, it's not sponsored, by the way. Ma- no. The Magic the Gathering is not sponsoring this podcast or anything no. along those lines. Dragon Magic Games, I guess, may sponsor. Uh, kind of, sort of sponsors. Um, this so podcast. I got into Magic the Gathering when it first came out. And the first set was called Alpha. Um, originally, I had a group of friends that we would get together and play D&D. And when this came out, the place that we bought our D&D stuff, um, which is another game store here in town, which is still around, um, and this was been 20-some years ago, called Hobby Corner. Um, that's where we would buy all our miniatures and our dice and our books for D&D. They had this card game, and they were talking about it, and one of the guys in the group decided to try it, and he really liked it, so he convinced the D&D group that we should try Magic the Gathering. And we had oh, between 6 and 10 people that came and played D&D pretty regularly, and we all started playing Magic. And if anybody knows anything about collectible cards, it, it's a hobby that can get Expensive. pretty pretty pricey when you're trying to have build a better deck than yeah. your friend. Um, and over the years, Magic has come out with more and more sets every year, where it used to be, you know... It used to be four sets a year, wasn't it? Mm, it was a little bit more than that. I mean, when, it, when they first started it off, there was only... Yeah, a couple sets a year, and then it was like a set a quarter, but then they had uh, like the the core set, which was a combination of all the sets they had released that year, and then they there were special sets that came out like Elves versus Dragons or um, Blessed versus Cursed. I mean, they had different things going on, and each set has a different theme. I honestly couldn't tell you what the theme of this set is. It's called Modern Horizons, but I don't know what the theme is. Like, the last set that came out was Adventures in the Forgotten Realm, and it was a D&D-based theme. So it was a lot of characters and, and creatures from different D&D things. Sure. And the next one that comes out is Innistrad, which is uh, a lot of werewolves and vampires. Gotcha. So, so anyway, I got into playing Magic with my friends, mm-hmm. and then uh, as my kids got old enough, I started teaching them how to play magic and and tried playing D&D with them and I think I tried too early with them on the D&D. Yeah. Cuz now they they're all about getting together and playing a game of D&D but the right. at that time they they just they couldn't handle sitting that long and trying to use their imagination whereas right. this being a card-based turn-based game. Right. They were all about it. Right. And they love playing and a lot of times that's what we'll do for their birthday is we get together and order some kind of food, whether it's sushi or pizza or tacos or whatever, and we sit down and the whole family sits around and, and plays Magic the Gathering for two to eight, eight hours. hours, yeah. Sometimes you know, and then and we talk about everything that's going on with them. Yep. Just hang out for the day kind of thing. So, in these colors, when we start alphabetizing, once we put them in inventory, we'll sleeve them, and we don't sleeve them individually. Um, if there's like five of this called this card here called Piercing Rays, we'll put all five of them into a sleeve. <clears throat> Depending on the card you can put, or the sleeve, you can put eight to ten cards in a sleeve. With the foils, however, we sleeve these individually. So that's why Lachelle usually stacks them over back over by me. Because once I'm done opening the packs, then I break out sleeves. And the reason we sleeve the cards is to protect them. Yes. As cards get older, especially rarer cards, they become worth more. And if they're in mint condition, meaning they don't have any nicks or scratches or anything like that or any wear on them from play, then they tend to hold their value better. So by sleeving the cards, you're protecting the cards for the person that ends up buying them from me. You're protecting their investment. They're getting a higher quality collectible card if they just want um a card to to finish out a deck that they that they play with all the time they might buy a card that isn't near mint that is slight play or moderate play or depending on the card if it's a really hard to get card they might even buy one that's heavy play or damaged um the older cards people will buy up just about any version of them that's not foil but it's uh colorless it's a land Oh, it is a land. 
I can't pick it up. It's all right. There we go. So yeah, when when I'm sorting them too, I part of the reason that I only like the three packs in a stack is because I can hold it and then I I'm able to grab the corners or the edges of the card and sort them that way. Um, so then that way I'm not scratching them with my nails or anything along those lines. Because again, we don't we want to cause the least amount of damage to any of the cards as we can. So and but we don't wear gloves and stuff, which I I've heard some places do when well, they're opening cards. I'm, you know, if I had some of the older sets, you would. And I was going to open them up. I yes, I would definitely wear cards. Or if I felt like my hands were real sweaty, sure, I would I would put gloves on. Um, I mean, we definitely again the nice thing about this you're doing it and... right again the nice thing about this is and I don't have anything against video games. My kids all had video games. I had video games. But it's a game that you can play with your kids and have conversations yes. about what's going on in their life and stuff that they're doing. And here, in, at least in Iowa City, the junior high and the high school both had a magic club. Yeah. So the kids, you know, could play with their friends. Right. Um, I think that's the biggest thing that I like about it, is it something to do as a family. Or as a group of friends or right. what have you. Yeah. And you can chat while you're playing. It's not... Um, so crazy fast or busy or whatever that you can't have discussions, side conversations, what have you. And there are formats that you can play in that are less expensive. So the format that we tend to play in here is called um, Commander or EDH, and that's when you have 100 cards in your deck. You don't have to have expensive cards to have a good deck. And there are formats um, that are less expensive, uh, like there's one that's called Popper, um, commander, and in that one you can't that. you can't have cards over a certain dollar amount. Oh, really? So you couldn't have the hundred dollar, you know, card that everybody has been trying to get that came out that destroys everything. Sure. You know, so it makes it fun for everybody in all demographics of income or whatever, however you want to say that. You know, you don't right. have to be super rich. You're always going to have those people that play in the super rich. Right. I mean, I. I have some nice cards and I have some nice decks, but I got rid of my most expensive card a long time ago, and I, I mean, I wish I still had it at this point. Um, I had one of the Ruby Moxes, uh, a Beta Ruby Mox, but the the most expensive card, uh, the Black Lotus, a near mint or mint graded Black Lotus. I can never remember because I know some Pokemon card went for over a quarter of a million dollars. I feel like a well, Black and they Lotus. Change. You I know, know. I'm just thinking about the how much the most expensive one went for. Yeah. And I feel like one of them went for almost a half a million dollars, but I can't remember for sure. That's just crazy, to me. I mean, that it's just I can't even imagine having a card cost that much. But. Well, it's I like mean, any, I get it. It's like anything that's collectible. I mean, that right. first run of those cards, the the Alpha set. And the Black Lotus is a card that they don't print anymore. Right. You know, and so are the Moxes. I mean, there's a whole list of cards that are on the reserve list that they don't print anymore. Sure. So those cards will just go up in value as they get older because there's less and less These and are less all the whites, right? Yeah. So the, we have officially opened all of the packs and, and sorted, sorted them, them by, by their color. color. Got this many foils, foils. out of them. Um, but we would still, at this point, and usually we're not at this table, so I have a, a squishier table that I work on in the living room, um, so it's easier to pick up the cards a bit. But so then, at this point, we would usually each take a stack and alphabetize them within color to sort. And then once they're all sorted, then you put them into inventory in the computer. I don't usually wait for them all to be sorted. I will sort the foils. I start with the foils, and then right. you usually start with the white, and I start at the other end. Or vice versa. And then as I get one sorted, I start putting them in inventory. Right. Because you sort so much faster than I do, then right. you're caught up and I can be putting stuff in inventory as you've got it sorted and alphabetized and then I'm sleeving right. it. And Yeah. We have right. a good system and we get to we watch do. We get to watch a lot of movies. We watch Star Wars over and over and over again, all the Star Wars <laughs> ones. And Marvel is another big one. Hog, yeah. uh, and I Harry like Potter. to watch I like to watch movies that I've already seen. Right, because we don't have to pay a lot of attention because right. we're sorting the cards. Because and... again, I'm I'm not really looking up. I'm focusing on sorting. Um, but I've been told that I'm fast at sorting. You are. Okay. I don't. 
I, I've never watched other people sort. So Dolan's fast at it. Devin and I are very slow at it. But part of the reason you're so slow is that you get lost in the cards and you're looking at the cards that you, you got. Sometimes. That, that are And you're reading what they can do. And then you get so excited that then you start talking about, you know, yes. look at this card. It can do this. And then, then you can match it with this card. And I've heard your discussions kind yes. of thing. Sometimes. Where I don't even know what the cards are called when I've sorted them. Even when I've alphabetized them, I don't usually have an idea of what And sometimes the kids come is. over and they help sort yeah. stuff. Like Dolan came over last week and sorted a bunch of cards. And then I found a stack of cards on the table with a note saying, can I buy these? <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, yeah, buddy, I won't put those in inventory. I'll hold them out for you. <laughs> the perks, the perks of yeah. the job. So poor Devin, he, I mean, Dolan got most of his cards back after the fire. Oh, poor Devin, right. Devin lost all his cards in the yeah. fire. So Devin has one deck right. and it doesn't even have all of his best cards in it. So he's trying to rebuild his, right. his one commander deck. Yeah. So. Yeah. Christmas is coming at some point. We'll, we'll have to get him cards for Christmas and stuff, but. Yeah, so that that is how we spend our free time. <laughs> Believe it or not, it really is. I mean, when we come home from a gig, we don't do this no, every I, night. No. Um, sometimes if the puppies are not wanting to go to bed, we will. Yeah. Um, I'll start sorting cards or I'll start putting ones that are already sorted into inventory. Um, yeah. But uh, it's good, like, well, sometimes you'll be like, let's sort cards. And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't want to sort cards today. Like there are times that I'm just like, no, I'm not into it, but it's good for me. If I know, like, I just want a day where I can kind of veg out, watch TV, what have you. But I'm the type of person that if I don't have something to do while I'm watching TV, I will eat anything within the house. And so then I will gain 300 pounds while watching TV for the day if I don't have something to do. And so then this is something then that I feel like, I have something to do. It's keeping me busy. I'm not snacking, which is good for me, and it helps you out. And I certainly don't want to delude anybody that you can do this and make a bunch of money. I don't want no. people to think that. I mean, there are people that do it and make money. Yes. Oh, yeah. There's no yeah. doubt about that. Um, but you you would have to devote a, a lot of extra time. I mean, it's, it's a full-time job to make money at it, and even then, you're not making a ton necessarily well, unless you if you got... have a store and you're doing other things besides just magic right. then you know right there are a lot of successful game stores yes um i do it again as as a hobby um i did have a store and it did make money to keep itself open i don't feel like i was ever able to pay myself right. but um i i got into it more as a hobby because right. i like to collect the cards and it was a way for me to be able to pay for my hobby right yes it, so and it if that's something that you want to do you know, by all means, it's easy to, to sell cards through. There's different online outlets to sell the cards. You can sell right. them through eBay, Facebook. You can have an Amazon store if you want to. Um, I never had good luck on Amazon. Uh, you can sell them through Card Shark. Uh, they can contact us if they I think there's one called questions. Goldfish, TCG Player. Yeah. There's a whole bunch. But it's, it's a fun game. And again... <coughs> Like, I would say I'm a light player. I played I played with friends because friends played in college. I never had my own deck or anything that way. But then when I met you and you were like, oh, a bunch of us are getting together. We're going to play Magic the Gathering for the weekend. I'm like, I have not heard about Magic the Gathering in years. And you were like, you know Magic the Gathering? I was like, well, I played like twice in college. More than twice. But for a couple of years, I had friends that played. And that's what we would do is hang out and play cards and they taught me kind of how to play the game. I said, but again, it's been years. I'm not sure I remember all of it. Good morning, Mala. Hey, Mala, all done. <laughs> anyway, and so then, yeah, I, we kind of got back into playing. But I don't I don't really know how to build decks or anything along those lines. I, I'm not a great player, and I'm easily beaten when we play. I'm usually the first one out. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, I, I mean, the, the one thing that I want to reiterate about this is, I mean, you can play board games, yeah. you know, with your kids, and it's a great way to connect with them, but if they get bored of that, right. I mean, this is a fun thing to do to collect the cards and, and talk yes. about the different cards and try different decks and try different techniques of playing right. stuff, and it, it doesn't have to be super fast-paced. You know, when you right. go to a store and you're playing against somebody you don't know, it's a, a little faster pace, but at home it's a nice, slow pace. And it's a great way to connect with your kids, right? Conversate with them, and you can buy 
pre-made decks yes. if you're new at it yep. and buy those pre-made decks and you can play those pre-made decks hundreds of times yep. and, and then you never slowly, have the same game. Right, and you can slowly build those decks and make them slightly better by putting slightly better cards in them as right. you can afford them or trade with your other friends for different cards. Right. Yep, right. absolutely. Yeah, so it, it it's one of those that you, you can make it an expensive <coughs> hobby kind of thing. You can really get into it, but even just having each person having one deck you can play thousands of games and never have the same game over and over where like grace's favorite game was life you know right. you play life so many times it kind of happens the same way yes it's a little different but it's still the game of life this never has that same feeling right because every time you're bringing in cards they're coming in a different order and you're you're playing them in a different order and stuff that way so it's it's very it's like solitaire right, right? It, it's even with solitaire, though, there's a repetitiveness to it. So this doesn't feel repetitive, is my point. Right. Well, because new cards are coming out all the time. Well, yes. But even with the same deck. Right. I, and because your decks are so big when the way that we play. Yes. So we don't play the smaller deck format. Right. So. Right. So um, that's what we do. Yeah. If anybody ever has any questions about it, you know, please message us. Again, we're on Facebook yeah. and, and Twitter and Instagram and whatnot. Yeah. Um, it's a fun little hobby. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was informative for you. Yeah. Um, until next time, I don't know what else to Absolutely. say. I, I knew there was no way we were going to get all the way through everything in that little amount of time. No, I'm surprised we even got them all cracked and sorted color-wise. So that's exciting. We got <laughs> part of it. And that, that's part of, for me, too. I like the, the, at some point, there is an end point. Even though then you open another box, and I'm like, I hate you right now. Right. So, but when the box is done, like right now, I feel like I'm at a good stopping point. I could walk away. And so we're, what, around 25, 30 minutes at this point. That's a good break for me to get my mind off of what I've been reading or studying or what have you and not think about that or let it kind of think in the back of my mind because this isn't super thought process right. oriented for me. Right. So, yeah. So hopefully you found it informative and, and you know, somewhat enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, I realized we didn't have our normal back and forth banner, Banter? but no. thanks for tuning in and hopefully we <laughs> will see you next week. Take care.